Okay, Teresa, you're live. All right, thank you, Marcus. Um, welcome to the Village of Board, Village of Buchanan Board meeting of December 7th, 2021. This meeting is being conducted in accordance with Chapter 417 of the Laws of 2021. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. And after, um, let's have a moment of silence. Today marks 80 years um, since Pearl Harbor. And um, so let's take a moment of silence to remember and honor those we lost that day when our country was attacked, a day of infamy. I pledge allegiance to the flag. To the flag. Of the United, United States, States of America, America. America. and to the Republic, to the Republic for which it stands, for which it stands one, nation, one nation, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice, for all. justice for all. All right, thank you everyone. And thank you, Marcus. I like the flag, very good. Thank you, my father served in World War II, so it is an important wow. day for me as well. Absolutely. Um, let's see, um, I am here this evening. I will not be on video. I had a, uh, an accident two weeks ago and some had some injuries. So um, I have decided to be off video, but I am certainly here. So let's move along on the agenda. It's the approval of the minutes of October 26, 2021 workshop meeting. Do we have any questions, corrections, right. questions, comments? I have none. Okay. None. Okay. All good here. All right, good. All in favor? Aye. Oh, All good. right. Aye. Okay, moving along to November 3rd, 2021 board meeting. Any questions, comments, corrections? All good. Okay. Good. All right. Motion to accept the minutes as recorded. So, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, good. And I also want to mention Trustee Capicotti is running just a little bit late, but he will he will come in when he's uh, he's ready. So first thing is comments from the floor, agenda items only. Do we have any comments from the floor? Any raised hands, anything? Uh, to, um, oh, there is a... the, on the chat, there is, uh, let's take a look at the chat. And they, they also have a raised hand. So tell me what order you want to go in. Um, well, this is on agenda items only. And I think the one in the chat is not on the agenda this evening, but we will address it. Um, okay. We, we do have one raised hand. Do you want to, to allow? Yes. Okay, sure. Let's Let's do it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Up. Hold on one second. I'm going to allow them to speak. Please. Hold on a second. Yeah, please. I don't want them if they have a, a question. It's something I don't want them to wait through the whole meeting if it's you know. <clears throat> Exactly. Okay, I just have to, I have to move them on there. Hold on one second. Okay. Yeah, there's a conundrum. Did we get, can we get that person in or? Yeah, uh, Miss Wenz, you're on. We can see you. You got to unmute yourself. Hello? Okay. Oh. Yep, we can yeah. hear you now, Laura. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Hi, how Hi. are you? Okay. <laughs> so I have a question on the agenda towards the bottom, actually. Um, so I was wondering, um, this is in regarding to the senior part-time account clerk position. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just wondering, um, you know, I had been looking for a job myself. I've been in the job market for a while. And as a village resident, um, I was just wondering if this is some, this is a position that has, that was posted on the website because I had been back and forth on the website over several months and never saw it posted. So I was just curious, does this, a position like this have to get posted on the village website, being that we are a municipality? or was it posted at all within the last four months or anything? 
Marcus, I, I wasn't at the last workshop when we were dealing with this, but Marcus, did, did you post this on any sites? Uh, no, we went from word of mouth to try to get some mm. um, interesting applicants and the person that did respond meets the civil service requirements. So um, that's the reason why that person was on there. She was interviewed by the staff. I understand, but as a resident, um, you know, I mean, in the future, is that how it is that the process in the future? If other positions were to become available? No, I uh, think it, no, it, it should be it. on. It mm -hmm. should be on our our in our newsletter. It should be on um, uh, even our Facebook page. And you know, I think the requirements that are needed for that position, for example, if it's a civil service position, I think everything should be spelled out so that yeah, a, a resident could um, apply to that. Yeah, we I could mean, definitely we could definitely change that and going going to the future. Absolutely. Because in all fairness, I think you know. I you know there does it is a link on the website that says job opportunities, um, you know. I was just a little surprised, I guess, when I saw it on the agenda. I'm sorry about that, Laura. I understand what you're saying, though. Mm -hmm. Okay, that answers my question. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions? We had someone else, I know, I guess, maybe they just wanna be answered by the chat. Um, we could do that too. Let me see if I can get back into the chat. I, I'm sorry here, let's see. Um, so I, I think this person is talking about the abandoned house. Um, must be posted by law. Okay, here's, yeah, here's someone, I believe if it's a civil service job, it must be posted by law. Marcus, you would have to answer that because otherwise, um, if we're not doing this properly, then we need to remove that from the agenda this evening. Marcus, are you there? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I was muted. Sorry, um, no, there is no civil, law, civil service law uh, change or anything like that. So um, it's a policy the board wants to do in the future, we can change it. And then we could put it on the website, like you say, we could post it on our website, we can send an email blast out uh, for any, any open positions in the future. But with even laborers positions, we, I don't think we've ever posted those positions on the, on the website or anything like that. If anybody can remember, we can definitely set a policy and how we're gonna do in the future. When you say labor, you mean the part-time caretaker, right? I'm talking about any, any positions in the future. If we got retirees well, in the, the future. Union, I thought the union positions had to be posted. Yeah, but they're posted internally. They're not posted on our website or posted publicly anywhere. But we can change that and we want to do that for all the positions. Well, I, yeah, I think when we have a position open, I think it should be advertised. Yeah, we could do, we could do all avenues. Absolutely. That would make sense. All right. So you feel that this was advertised properly? Uh, we, uh, there's no requirement regards how to advertise it. So, so we're not breaking any state laws or any laws to do it this way. It's mm -hmm. just an internal policy if the board wants to change the policy from this point forward. Um, all right, any other questions on that? I'm sorry. Uh, is there any way that Dan, I, I know you're in the chat box, would you be able to come in live to ask your question or Just read the question. Okay, one is, hello, I have questions regarding two houses on Bannon Avenue. One is the abandoned house that has been there for many years. And I believe he is also saying there's another house with a lot of cars in front of it. Um, oh, okay, my camera on my laptop is currently not working. Okay, no problem, Dan. Um, and then I believe there's another property. So I know the one property, which is in the middle of Bannon Avenue, which um, is at the intersection of Cortland Street, that got into a, that got into a huge mess um, where it was, um, it was left in an estate and then there was money owed on it for a nursing home. All of the, um, the heirs had passed and so um, it's been in a limbo state. I know the village of Buchanan has been going in cutting the grass um, so it doesn't affect the rest of the neighborhood. 
but I believe a few months ago, the, uh, the town has foreclosed on that property. So the town will be doing some work there and they will be putting that property up for sale. I understand it needs extensive work um, from what I've heard. So that's, that's the status of that. The town is in control of that property now. It will be sold. The money will be distributed from the sale to pay off the liens. Um, not sure if all the liens will be covered, but you know that's uh, to stay tuned on that one. The other property, um, Dan, I'm not sure what you're, where you're talking. Does anybody in the meeting know what property he's referring to on Bannon? No, I assume that was one of them, but the other well, Dan, one. Dan, I think Dan can hear us, even though he's, uh, yeah. he's not on live. Um, perhaps he could um, contact the village hall with the oh, um, address, okay. and then the building the bill inspector can sure. go out and look at it. End of Seward, make a left. Oh. All right. End of so Dan, if there's some way we can get back to you, we'll, we'll look into that and we can give you some information. So that would be by the church, I, I, would, assu I would assume. I would assume it's near there. All right, Dan, if you could contact the, the village tomorrow, um, the office 737-1033, option one, and uh, let us know which house that is, the second house you're talking about. And then, then we could get back to you with the information on that. Yeah, he provided some more information. I'll, I'll, okay. get this, I'll get this information to the building department tomorrow. Okay, perfect. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you for your questions. Okay. Um, new business. So I'm going to make a motion to open the public hearing regarding a local law to amend the code of the village of Buchanan by adding a new chapter 70 opting out of the licensing and establishing of retail cannabis dispensaries and on-site cannabis consumption establishments within the village. So we have been discussing this for several months. We've had public hearings. Um, we've received comments from residents. Um, I expressed my, my dis disapproval of this. Um, I just think we're a 1.3 square mile village, mostly residential. And I just don't think it's something we should be promoting um, to our youth in the community. Um, other communities in our area, I believe, I believe um, Croton will be having retail sales, but not um, lounges. So there will be, and I believe Peak Scale will have. Mm -hmm. So, you know what? My thought on it was, you know what? We don't have a supermarket here. We don't have a drugstore here. So people, you know what? Don't have a problem traveling out of the village to purchase things. So I just, just don't think it was something that we, we needed here. And I, I know some board members were kind of in favor of it, but I think after hearing from the public and getting more information on this, I know one of the things that was talked about was the money that could be made on this. And then we, we kind of worked that down out of a million dollars. Um, so it's 4%, 1% would automatically go to the county. So that leaves, 3% on a million dollars, that would be $30,000 on a million dollars of sales, that would be $30,000. So, but that doesn't even count what the town, so you would still have to make an agreement with the town. So that wasn't too clear if the town opts out and the village doesn't opt out. So that, that wasn't really too clear. Um, all the regulations haven't been set up. So there were just a lot of non-positive things. So, and one of the biggest things I think we came to a consensus was that you can always opt in, but you can't opt out. So I would like to read a few emails that a few of the, well, one we know is a resident and the other person, I'm not sure. Point, point of order, Mayor, we should open up the public area. Yeah. Right? Oh, I'm Thank so you. sorry. I'm sorry. Make a motion, oh, open a motion to open the public hearing in regard Second. to the sale of, okay, thank you. Second. All Thanks, in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. So now it's open. So now I did make those comments, but I'm going to read in uh, to the record a few comments from um, a resident, and I believe this other person is a resident. G. Koo, I may not be able to attend the Zoom session regarding the sale of, uh, cafe, of pot and cafe um, in our beautiful hamlet. Nothing good will come of it. 
It's a gateway to the other drugs. We need to set an example to our young people. I know the argument will be that we allow, um, we allow bars, but why add more temptation? Some will argue it will, it will bring in revenue. No amount of money can give us back our youths. Please opt out, save our kids. Um, the other one comes from Bob Vargo, who has been a longtime resident here. And he says, I see no reason for the village of Buchanan to partake in any way to encourage these or on premise, these on premises use of cannabis or any other previously banned substance in the village of Buchanan. Like many of their, of, like many other forbidden drugs or any mind altering substances that have been banned for years, there is no value to the village of Buchanan residents or to our village employees to encourage. <coughs> to encourage um, these recently passed, this recently passed legislation, which was designed um, by some very weak-minded politicians who have their hands already in the cannabis jar, stand strong together or divide and be taken down by some very ignorant people. So thank you for both of those comments. Um, and now I'm gonna open it up to the board if they have any other comments for this. Marijuana legislation. Uh, Teresa, don't you think it should be open to the public first? Yeah, I just open. Well, you know, you, you we could do it either way, Rich, because we're we're going to both cover. But if you would like, we'll we'll open it up to the public. Is there anybody out in public that would like to make a comment on this? Uh, this uh, uh, Wilder just sent you a, uh in the chat box, Teresa. You might want to read that. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Let me go over to the chat. Okay. Oh, okay. Awilda is, I am in complete agreement that we should opt out. Okay. Thank you, Awilda. Yeah, help me keep track of the chat box and the hands raised, Marcus. Thank you. No problem. Uh, I don't see any hands raised, uh, Teresa. Okay. Any other board members have a comment? Yeah. Like I said, uh, yeah. <laughs> May I comment? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I I um, basically defer to all the feedback we've gotten re from residents and in, uh, and uh, that we should play, be cautious right now and um, um, and opt out at this time. I personally uh, don't, as I've said at previous workshops, I personally see a lot of parallels with alcohol, um, whether they're legal or illegal, both alcohol and cannabis will be used. So the legalization does have advantages of regulating and um, taxing um, and marijuana like alcohol can be used casually in moderate amounts or it can be abused. Many people have died as a result of alcohol use and accidents. Um, I don't, I think that, um, um, you know, one of the problems with marijuana is there's no test for if somebody is stoned and they're driving, um, you know, you can't just look at their red eyes and say, uh, you know, there's a problem here. Yeah, there might be, but there's, you know, with alcohol, you can quantify the blood alcohol. There's nothing like that for marijuana at this mm -hmm. time. Um, so while I do see parallels and I have, I kind of feel like if one's legal, why isn't the other? Um, and to some extent, I feel the government should not be telling people what to do, um, which is not how I feel on all things. <laughs> I don't feel the government should completely be out of our lives, but, but I see parallels between those two. But uh, everything, all the feedback we've gotten from the public um, raises concerns. And as a representative of the public, I feel it's wiser right now to, to, um, to, to vote to opt out uh, in support of all the comments we've gotten over the last couple of months, really. So I'll be voting to opt out. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I'm sorry, Teresa, you got another comment on the chat box if you want okay. to read that. Oh, okay. And this is from Dan. And he says, I think we should opt out also. All right. Thank you, Dan.
Okay. So I am going to make a motion to close, if there's no other comments from the public or the board, to a motion to close the public hearing in regard to the cannabis, cannabis dispensary and on-site consumption opt out. No move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So now I'm going to read the um, resolution authorizing the opt out. So whereas the resolution was duly adopted by the Board of Trustees of the Village of Buchanan for a public hearing to be held by said village board at the municipal building, which we're doing on Zoom this evening, and conducted virtually in accordance with, New York, with current New York State legislation to hear all interested parties on a proposed local law adding Chapter 7 entitled Cannabis Dispensary and On-Site Consumption Opt-Out Code of Village of Buchanan, and whereas notice of said public hearing was duly advertised in the official local paper, and whereas said public hearing was duly held at a regularly scheduled meeting on December 7th, 2021 at 7.30, um, in accordance with legislation S-5001 and A-4001, signed by Governor Hochul to receive public comment with request to the retail sale dispensaries and or on-site consumption of cannabis in the Village of Buchanan, all parties were permitted an opportunity to speak on behalf or in opposition of the proposed local law or any part thereof. And whereas the Board of Trustees of the Village of Buchanan, after due deliberation, finds it in the best interest of the village to adopt said local law. Now, be it, therefore, let it be resolved that the Board of Trustees of the Village of Buchanan here adopts said local law number 9, 2021, adding Chapter 70 entitled Cannabis Dispensary and On Site Consumption Opt Out to the Code of Village of Buchanan, a copy of which is attached here to and made a part of this resolution. And be it further resolved, pursuant to New York State Cannabis Law, 131, this local law is subject to a permissive referendum and thus may not be filed with the Secretary of State until the applicable time period has lapsed to file a petition or a referendum has been conducted app approving this law. Okay, on a motion. So moved. Second. Second. On a question? On a question. Sure. Uh, as, as you know, in the... Uh, in the resolution it says uh, the law is subject to a permissive referendum. Will we be making the permissive referendum available to the public? And will anybody who requests the information for a permissive referendum at Village Hall will that be made available to them? Yes, absolutely. Okay. They can um, contact uh, the office if they're so interested in getting those signatures. And Stephanie, um, what was the percentage of of what was the percentage again? It's of registered, is it registered voters or people who voted in the past? It's uh, the, the pe people who, were, I'm sorry, Steph, go ahead. No, you can go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's people who are eligible to vote within the village okay. of Canada. It's, okay. So it, it's basically a percentage of the voter list. Mm -hmm. And okay. I do have, I have copies of petitions that I can forward to Cindy or Sharon so they can have it on hand. Okay. What was the uh, percentage of the electorate that has to, is it 20%? No, I'll have to get back to you. There's so many of these we've been looking it's, at lately. It's, it's uh, 20% and there's a 1,400 and I believe mm -hmm. 80 people was uh, eligible to vote in the village of Buchanan. I believe the number is 289, but that's just right. around about, I, it could be a little bit off on that, but. Okay. Right. All right. Approximately. Uh, as long as the information is made available to anybody who wishes to report yeah, missing referendum, as long as that's available, there's no problem. Yep, we're good. Okay, so. Um, you have to vote. Okay, and I did on a question, and then all in favor? Aye. 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 No one. Okay, so unanimous. Okay. Uh, uh, point of order, uh, Madam Mayor, if you could just have uh, Anthony down as uh, not voting. Okay, sure. Absolutely. Cindy, you're taking notes. Yeah, if we could put Anthony down as not, uh, well, yep, not we present. Or absent. Yep, we put him down yeah. as absent. Yeah. He might come yeah. in during some other things. No problem. Yep. No problem. Okay, so the next resolution C, uh, rescinding the acceptance of a proposal from Hardesty and Hanover to create a new zoning district encompassing the Indian Point properties at a cost of approximately $14,000. We had approved this. We had uh, we had an interest in rezoning the Indian Point property. Um, as I read this, you'll see there was a problem with this company. They felt they were into a conflict of interest, so they were no longer able to provide that service. 
So, whereas on November 3rd, 2021, at a public meeting, the Village of Buchanan, by motion, accepted a proposal from Partisy and Hanover to provide planning services to create a new zoning district for the Indian Point properties at a cost of approximately $14,000. And whereas Hardesty and Hanover had subsequently advised that due to a conflict of interest, it can no longer provide said service and therefore requires this rescission. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the motion accepting a proposal to create a new zoning district for the Indian Point properties by Hardesty and Hanover in the approximate amount of $14,000 is hereby rescinded by its entirety. On a motion? So moved. Second. 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 On a question? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, moving right along to resolution D. Um, so we have a um, another person, uh, David Smith, who's on with us this evening um, to take over <coughs> this, um, this thing that we're doing here with the rezoning. And uh, I think the board has all received his, uh, his information. And David, while you're on here, is there anything you would like to say? Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, present to the, uh, to the Village of Buchanan uh, to provide uh, the services. Uh, it's been about, I think about a year since we last uh, met in person. Mm -hmm. uh, I continue to be in business, I'm, uh, which is a good thing, beats the alternative. Uh, and uh, I could give you a, a little background, just a refresher. Uh, I, uh, although I don't look it, I've been in the business for uh, a little over 30 years. Um, I have uh, my municipal clients include the Village of Sleepy Hollow, the Village of Malmesford, uh, the Village of Ardsley. Uh, I've recently been retained by uh, the town of Somers uh, to act as their uh, planning director. Uh, and I include the, the town of Newburgh as my, some of my municipal clients. <clears throat> I also have a private uh, clientele list, which includes uh, Rose Development. Uh, we've got a major project in the village of Portchester. Uh, I include uh, Art Collins and Collins Enterprises. We have a, a, a TOD, a transit-oriented development project that we're working on in uh, the village of Tarrytown. And I've got a, a handful of other uh, uh, developer clients with a smaller projects scattered throughout uh, the uh, lower Hudson Valley. Uh, so I, I bring uh, kind of that experience of both municipal and the kind of the development uh, community uh, with me. And I think, you know, part of my um, most significant background is working with the Village of Sleepy Hollow and the redevelopment of the General Motors site, which I've been a part of uh, basically since the beginning. Uh, I started working with the village in, in uh, shortly after the GM plant was decommissioned and, and demolished in 97. And I'm happy to say that the village now has almost um, 500, almost 600 units of housing that uh, are due to come online within the next year, uh, mm -hmm. along with the Tachico supermarket uh, and a, uh, a waterfront uh, park uh, that's uh, recently been opened. So uh, it's been a, a very, uh, challenging but rewarding experience that uh, I like to bring as part of my uh, background. Great. May I ask you, Mr. Smith, uh, in your opinion, what's the biggest difference between uh, uh, proposing things for a uh, like the Hudson River waterfront or other waterfront property versus inland property? Well, I think the, the, the biggest uh, issue is, and for a site like this, we're in a community like Buchanan, we haven't had access to the waterfront uh, for several generations. And I think that's one of the challenges is making sure that um, that's kind of the, uh, the benefit to the community is providing public access to, uh, to the waterfront. And then being able to kind of step back and, and allow the development to occur inland. Uh, so I, I think that's uh, one of the uh, the biggest challenge is making sure you've got adequate access uh, for the public. I mean, that's, that's, it's a, a public benefit that really needs to be um, incorporated as part of any of the planning efforts. Thank you. May um, I? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. um, hi, yeah, David, how are you? The, um, Good evening. How many, 
Uh, how many acres was that uh, property, the GM property? GM property is approximately 100 acres, um, and it's bisected <clears throat> by uh, the Metro North uh, rail line. So you have approximately. Oh yes. Two thirds is on the yep. <laughs> two thirds is on the the western side. Yeah. And about a third is located on uh, the eastern side of the tracks. Right, and as right. part of the development program, as part of the environmental review, <clears throat> the uh, the developer at the time essentially donated the eastern portion, the roughly 24 to 30 acres, to the village. And that was part of the mitigation that was um, a part of the environmental review. And so the village is actually relocating their existing EPW, which is located on River Street right off the water. Oh, okay. Off of the waterfront, and then to this what they call the east parcel, gotcha. uh, and so it creates a synergy. So now the village has this property, uh, which it's decommissioning, and now it, it will eventually make available to the development community. So there's a series of dominoes that are occurring, uh, yeah. which uh, continue to benefit the village. Wonderful, right. good for them. Well, I, uh, I. Uh, I think we're dealing now with a property that's about three or four times as big and probably a lot more diverse, not just a, a portion on one side of the tracks and a portion on the other. No tracks involved here, but um, prob I, I know you mentioned that in your proposal that you know one, poss one possibility would be an overlay zone, uh, a rezoning um, uh, could be done in different ways, could create an entirely new zone or possibly an overlay zone. Of course, we have to discuss that. But um, I think we are not going to be dealing with 365 acres that can all be used the same. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I suppose that um, I don't know if an overlay works in that case because there's so many differences from mm -hmm. one area of that 365 acres to another. Uh, yeah, can you comment on that? I mean, um, on you know, with the diversity of the potential uses, uh, can you comment on, you know, just how, you know, we might look ahead to 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 deal with that? So I, I think part of uh, part of your question is evaluating. Um, so what do you, you've got active uses down on the waterfront now, or in this industrial zone? With the uh, uh, what's the the manufacturer of the sheetrock? Sheetrock, yeah, sheetrock. And I just found out from uh, one of the developer people to deal with the sheetrock just went up thirty uh, percent, which means that that operation is much more valuable. Uh, hmm. So, from an economic standpoint, no. so that it may be there for a much longer term. So perhaps that's an area that that is a much longer term uh, evaluation or planning. And then you've got other areas located, and I'm just looking at a uh, at an aerial here. But you've got the the northern portion of the industrial district, which is more open space, and so maybe that's an area that's more prime for development right away. So you could you could segment out uh, different sections of uh, the waterfront where you you may include uh, uh, an active development program for one and maintain. Uh, the existing uh, program for the other in the expectation that at some point in time, uh, given the, uh, the redevelopment opportunities that, that those properties that are currently being used for industrial type uses would flip and, you know, it, it becomes more valuable uh, once you see how uh, the other properties get redeveloped. And, and I'm, I'm contemplating and I'm assuming that uh, that the community wants to have some type of a, a mixed use where you've got a residential component, you may have a retail component, uh, and certainly building on uh, the best asset you have, which is the access to, uh, to the Hudson River. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and certainly some of the properties are gonna be locked up for quite a while. So I think we have a challenge yeah. ahead of us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in your proposal, task one, creation of a vision statement, task two, setting the rezoning boundary, task three, drafting a proposed zoning text, task four, update to the village's comprehensive plan, text, task number five, environmental review, 
task number six, meetings, public hearings, because of course we want the input of the public, the village residents. And- uh, Absolutely. Yeah. So that, uh, and your fee, yeah, was 14,500, I believe. Yes. All right. Any other comments for other board members? Yes, I have a few, uh, Mayor. Sure. Uh, the original proposal from Hardesty and Hanover, I was under the impression it was just for the repurposing or rezoning of the Indian Point property, which is approximately 230, 240 acres. This one is now 365 acres, which would lead me to believe that it is the intent of the board to rezone the entire M1, M2 district. Is that correct? Because Indian Point is not 350 acres. It's approximately 240. I saw oh, that too. That was a, a yeah. question I had too. Yeah. There are two so that, portions of the Indian Point property. One is on the uh, riverside, which I believe is around 190 acres. And then you have across the street where the gas turbines are adjacent to the transformer yard and the uh, pipeline, which I believe is the balance of that acreage. So I was just wondering, uh, I wasn't involved with this back in September of 2020. And I just received this uh, in, in the package. So that's why some of my questions may be rudimentary or being. No, 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 not at all. And I, I think part of the, the scope, and you raised a very good question, is all right, so what do you as the village want to include as part of this zoning process? And is it the entirety of the industrial uh, zone area or is it uh, a different boundary or is it just the Indian Point property? I don't have the answer to that because I need to would have to have a dialogue with you as the village board, the elected representatives, or you know certainly with input from the public as to what you would like to see. So I, I didn't want to be presumptive and say no, it's only a small piece, or it, it, it you know let's look at the the larger scale and then maybe perhaps work our way down in so the next the, direction. The intent of your prospectus is for the entire M1 and M2 zone within a village of Buchanan, correct? Correct. Okay. Unless, unless directed otherwise. By the well, no, we're going to, we're just going to discuss what your contract is. This is what yeah. we're going to vote on. You know, yep. unfortunately mm -hmm. I didn't have the opportunity to, to, to vet this before tonight. So I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, when you spoke about segmenting out the project, uh, we had previous discussions uh, amongst ourselves. If we were going to use a DL English report to basically segment out the A, B, C, and D portions of it, and uh, my problem with doing that was one, we don't own the property. Two, the owner of the property has not requested this. And three, if we segment this out, we don't have any meets and bounds. We don't have any coordinates to discuss changing zoning for different sections of it. So in your proposal and through your comments, you said about segmenting out, how do you postulate being able to perform that function based on the limited information that we have? So uh, the question is, as I understand it, again, it gets back to what properties do you want to include as part of this evaluation? And um, you don't need necessarily the permission of the owner of the property to rezone that property. Um, there, there would be, they would be part of the, uh, the public process as part of that rezoning effort. Uh, but the, the community uh, under you know, state home rule law has the ability to set the zoning uh, for any property within its jurisdiction. Uh, so I think there is a, it would have to be, obviously they are a stakeholder because they own the property uh, and they have an interest in how it gets uh, zoned and, and the purpose for that zone. Uh, so there would be a, 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 uh, an opportunity for dialogue throughout this process. Uh, to include them in that. I understand we could change the zone uh, on any property, even one that's occupied. I don't believe, uh, maybe your interpretation, maybe you can educate me a little bit more. We're allowed to subdivide people's properties? No, you can't, no, you, no, you, that's, that's a separate function. That actually requires uh, an act by uh, the property owner to petition yeah. the community for subdivision. So um, you, if you, you could you could do the the zoning based on property line, um, uh, the different properties, and and uh, subdivide it or or zone it in that fashion. Typically, with 
um, with zoning, you don't like to split a property between two different zones. It's typically discouraged from, uh, from a land use and planning standpoint. Okay. Uh, another, another question I have on uh, we're talking about redoing an entire master plan. I believe the LWRP, as well as our previous discussions, were, and based on their re, uh, suggestions, the master plan was going to be just for this site. Uh, they had, uh, DL English had suggested, as, and the LWRP, that we come up with a master plan for the future use, not a master plan for the entire village. So the way I'm reading this, uh, update the village's current comprehensive plan. Is that the plan for the entire village or just for M1, M2? Just for M1, M2. Okay. Anything else, Sean? Uh, let's see, there was one other thing. Uh, oh, when we talk about EAFs, now the EAF for this, what actually, coming from a planning background, I was on the planning board for many years and we always asked for uh, EIFs and uh, through the planning process based on the actual use. I think we're gonna have such a global master plan or a global zone. How would we be actually be able to get an EAF that would be suitable for almost every purpose that could be postulated down there? Yeah, that, that's a good question. So the, the, this process and using the environmental assessment form um, sets uh, kind of a, a, a baseline and it's only evaluating the adoption of the, the zoning. And so the value is that when a developer comes in with an actual proposal, then they would need to go through the very specific and the much more rigorous uh, environmental review uh, by preparing an environmental impact statement. Um, and this is a, a, a typical uh, program that's used in uh, a number of communities that are evaluating this type of use. It was used as part of the process in Sleepy Hollow where the zoning was put in place. There was a, uh, uh, an environmental review similar to an EAF. And then when the developer came in, there was a very rigorous uh, environmental impact statement process that went on for several years where they evaluated all the, the, the potential impacts on traffic, on uh, municipal services, on water and on sewer. And I think part of the, the, the EAF is, is a much more general review because at this point in time, you're, you're setting kind of a zoning parameter, but you don't have a zoning program. You don't have a development program before you. So you could be spending a whole lot of money on studies and evaluations for a project that may never come to or a different type of project. And so the, the benefit is to do what's required under the law, the environmental review law to evaluate uh, this proposed action. And then you can defer the much more specific environmental review when you have a very specific program that's before you uh, and that's being requested as an approval. Okay. That's all I had, Mayor, thanks. All right, thank you. Um, you know, we have voted on this before and I, I feel strongly that we need to look at this. Um, we had gotten an appraisal from uh, Holtec of their property, which of course we knew was gonna be low bolt, but because of it being zoned a uh, more of a manufacturing, uh, it, it of course, you know, that didn't help us either. So, um, that's why I think that's one of the reasons. And my understanding is that there are people that are interested in some of the parcels. So I think the sooner we get this on the table and um, you know, so when the parcels are released, it can, it can, it can transition quicker that we're not, you know, spinning our wheels in the future. Who else has a comment? Anybody on the board? Okay. Um, anybody in, in the public have any comments on this? No? Okay. I think Nick is, Nick is muted. He wanted to. Oh, oh. okay. Thank you. I have a, a couple of comments and questions. 
I think I got cut off uh, my internet and then it came back. I, I, I was muted. I didn't realize it. Um, just to follow up on this, um, on the breakdown of the property and the rezoning. Um, David, you just said it's usually not recommended to, to have two different zones with, in the same, to split a property and zone it differently. But I think I want to, my understanding is that technically we can. And this is a very unique property, very large property and a very unique property. The needs of one area and the, what one part of it is suited for may not be the same as what another part is suited for. Mm -hmm. And I think even in just in, term, in terms of open space and in terms of tax uh, ratings, the village has an interest in having different uses in different places. So while it may not normally be what's done mm -hmm. Tell me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is we can zone that we could break that that property up any way we want and zone a half of it to be mixed use and the other half to be industrial or uh, or whatever it is we decide after we discuss this. Um, so technically, we can do that. Am I correct? Yes. 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 You could. And also, you could. Um, well, DL English did divide this into four properties based on mm. what they thought could be developed right away. What would not be developable for some period of time, what was kind of uniquely positioned off to the left side, whatever. You know, they broke it down into four parcels. Mm -hmm. There was absolutely nothing obligating us to follow their boundaries. Um, am I also right. correct in that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Correct. Yeah, that was just their study and how they saw different uses for different areas. We can break it up any way we seem, feel is suitable to get the different types of development in different areas that we would like, both in terms of open space, perhaps on the Northern parcel um, and mixed use, maybe industrial or some other uses that we haven't discussed it all yet on some of the other properties. And um, that said, I just wanna bring go to your proposal, David. There's one mm -hmm. part where you say the preparation of site plans, architectural plans are to be provided by others. Um, what about the uh, redoing of the zoning map itself? Um, I mean, obviously, we're not, you know, not going to generate uh, uh, detailed plans for development. Uh, we don't expect that of you. But would, would your proposal also include the, the, our current zoning map if we change the, um, uh, from that, if we break up that M1, M2 in any shape, way, shape, or form, uh, will your proposal include of redrawing the zoning map boundaries? You know, there's so, a reference map that's in our zoning book. Yeah, it, it depends on the format that the, the map is in. If it's a PDF format, then it's a fairly straightforward exercise to modifying the, uh, the map. I mean, it's basically redrawing yeah. uh, the, the boundary lines or, you know, in this, it may be just changing M1, M2 designation to whatever the new right. uh, zoning right. district is, right. Right. I That's not a heavy be, I just, you know, I suspect it's a good chance there could be some new division within that M1, M2. But anyway, uh, so if it was in a workable format like PDF. Yes, we could do that. that. Yes. Yes. Okay. That. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So if there's no more questions on a motion to accept. Whoops, hold on. Uh, on a motion to accept the Planning and Development Advisors David Smith proposal regarding a new zoning district for the Indian Point properties at a cost of approximately 14500 Can I get a second? Second. Uh, on a question? On a question. Thank you. Uh, you know, I'm, I've always been against hiring somebody to do something that I think we should be doing ourselves. Mm -hmm. We... Uh, I've been, I previously voted against the Hardesty and Hanover specifically because we didn't come up with an idea of how we want to use the properties in question in the future. I, now that we've even expanded from the original intent to the entire M1, M2 district, that really bothers me because we have never talked about changing the entire district. We only talked about the one parcel. One of the reasons why I talked about the DL English report 
was because in all of our discussions, we had talked about different parcels based on the previous reports. All of our decision making was based on that and the LWRP and what we felt would be better for that area. We have never even be, been able to come to a consensus. That site is very challenging because it has the two gas pipelines that transect it. And it has always concerned me that now that we're even talking about the entire M1 and M2, that we would be able not only to change the zoning of a, a, a business that's currently in operation, but now we're talking about subdividing the lots of manufacturing businesses that are in operation right now. That is, if there's not an overreach of government, I don't know what it is. And I had also stated that if we were worried that another company would come in and purchase these parcels, that it would be much quicker and much more efficient just to say, we're gonna put an overlay on the M1, M2 in a certain areas that we wanted and make it a C1, C2. So that the types of industries that were previously stated by board members that they were, didn't wanna have there would automatically be banned from that area. So it really, it's, it's really concerning that we're gonna try not only to subdivide the entire M1, M2 at our whim without the request of any of the businesses that own the properties. I, I think that that's just wrong. So I, I there, there's absolutely no way that I, I could uh, agree to try to do that type of proposal. I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's just wrong. Thanks. You know, I, you know we, we did approve this before. When we did approve it, it was for the 240 acre parcel because this was a, uh, a runoff from the LWRP where there was a lot of discussion on what people would like to see. I personally am not interested at this time. I'd prefer to stay um, more involved in the 240 acres and focus on that. Um, personally, so I'm just gonna tell you, I'm not interested in looking at the M1, M2. Um, I have had discussions with Holtec that we are in the process of rezoning. They understand why we would like to do that. And I told them that we definitely would keep them in the loop. Um, so I also feel very strongly that since we're not all planners educated in planning, educated in zoning. You know, we none of us have that background. I think it's very important that we hire the experience that we need um, because otherwise if we're gonna do it our own, we're gonna be spinning our wheels. I agree with you, Mayor, but I think we're too, too, too uh, the process is just starting. The, yes. And I don't think we even have a consensus among ourselves in order to give Mr. Smith the parameters which he's gonna to require to perform his duty. You know, and it's, it's gonna be a task that has no end because as I had stated before with partisan Hanover, they are gonna give us a certain amount of services and Mr. Smith is gonna give us a certain amount of services. And every time we ask him to come to a meeting to change a plan because one of us don't agree on it, it's gonna cost us more and more money. And it's just gonna be an open-ended uh, project. And this project probably wouldn't be able to be implemented for many years. And the village may be different in, in the years. It's, I, I just think it's too, too early in the project, it's in its infancy and to start this type of planning process. Even if, um, cause you do know with the, uh the agreement that we made with Holtec, we would be having consistent conversations with the early release of the property. <clears throat> so I personally don't think it's too early to, okay. to be discussing this. Um, I have asked several times, I've given my opinion of the 60 acres, what, what I would like to see there. Now, you know what? Maybe the rest of the board members feel differently. Maybe the rest of the village feels differently. So I have put out my thoughts there. So we're, I'm gonna set up a special meeting in January. And it's, it's a thought provoking meeting. I wanna hear what everyone's thoughts are. So what about the 60 acres? What, what do you think would go there? What about the acreage next to um, the sheetrock plant? Could that be, I don't know, could that be light industrial? I don't know. So, you know what, I really need people to start thinking, like start, you know, start thinking like this, we have one time to get this all right. 
So this is going to be a process. This is not going to end in a month. This is going to be a process where we discuss this. We agree. We disagree. David comes forward and says, you know what? I haven't seen that work there, but you know, what about this? You know, we have property next to the cemetery, which is across from the um, nuclear facility. You know, what, I don't know, what could go there? I don't know. We have it right near the cemetery there. There's a substantial piece of property there. I don't know. What, what do you think could go there other than a cemetery? Because there's no tax benefit for the, the residents in the village. Uh, I know some people have uh, from the church have asked to um, have that donated for a cemetery. And I, uh, I don't think that would benefit the village. I'm sorry to say that, but uh, we're just in a different financial position right now. So, you know, what is it we would like to see? I, I need people to start thinking out of the box, come up with anything. I mean, I might, what I said, maybe everybody will poo poo it and say, oh, that's terrible. I don't think that's good. Well, okay. So then what are your thoughts? So this is a thought provoking talk. Let's talk this out. Maybe somebody will come up with this unbelievable thought and we all go, wow, that's great. I think we should pursue that. But I think David's experience will help us provide a framework and, and what the possibilities are for this property. You know, it, it's we're in a place now where the village is transitioning. We're going from the past and we're moving into the future. So what do we want to see our village look like in the future? What are we, what are we planning to do here? What would we like to see? Would we like to see some public use of the property? I think we're all in agreement with that. But we're also very important to us that we get some tax dollars out of this. It's we need the tax base. So if we don't start thinking about this now, when do we start thinking about it? 10 years from now, five years from now, never, you know, so it, it's time to start planning. That's my, just, my, just my personal opinion, but I do agree with you with M1, M2. I think that's a little too much. I'd like to just springboard off of the LWRP, honestly. And we all know a lot of that property where the, um, where the decommissioning will be happening. That's not going to be available for best case scenario, probably like 10 to 15 years. I don't know. You know, I don't know with the process. Um, so that's not something we can be involved with at all. So, but there are the Northern part, the Southern part, you know, are those parcels? And then we have the training building over there. Are they going to need that training building? Maybe not. Maybe they would be interested in letting that parcel go and perhaps selling it to a company. Maybe the building could be taken over for office space. I don't know. I'm just thinking, I'm just saying, you know, what are the possibilities? Or would somebody come in and take that building down and I don't know, construct something else. So what are the possibilities? Let's, you know, let's, and, and I think, I think it would be good for the residents to be involved. And, you know, some people are so creative here in the village. I, I would really like to hear what their thoughts are. So I just, I think it's a process. It, it's, we have to start it and we just, we're just going to go forward. And um, we have, you know, David has an outline here and you know what, we'll follow that outline. But I think you're right. We do need to get together and say, this is what I'm thinking. And like I've said, I have put out my thoughts for the 60 acres twice now. So, you know, we'll start that again. Uh, Mayor, may I speak? Yes. yes. I think we're talking right now about at this particular point. I have my list already. I've had it for three months. Oh, okay, good. And I, I think we're talking about whether or not we want professional assistance with what we're doing or whether we don't, not mm -hmm. what we want to see there right now. So the question is that, and we should be voting on it now, is do we want professional, this professional person to assist us in this at this particular point? And we, we have a contract with them for the X amount of period of time. It's not for, it's not an ad infinitum contract. So I would like to see a vote right now because we have put this out there. So right now, it, it, unless there's some more comment, we should be voting on this. Well, uh, Rich, I, I agree, but I do have a couple of comments if I can. Um, I think I, I agree with what the mayor said. We absolutely need to have somebody lead us through this. This came up in the before. Uh, the thought that we're gonna do this on our own is a joke. Okay, if you go to a municipality like the town of Cortland, they have a complete planning department and they can do a lot of things in house. One of the consequences of being a little tiny village, the smallest village, smallest municipality in Westchester County 
is that we do not have a full-time planning staff. When we deal with things as important as this, we absolutely have to hire professional help to lead us through it. Sean, you mentioned that this may not be, get implemented for years. That's the point. What we need to do now is sort of set a template indicating where we would like to see the village go, what we would like to see there before somebody comes to us and say, we're buying this property from Holtec and here's what we want to do. And we're like, ah, bah, 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 bah. oh, well, we didn't have a plan. Uh, 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 do we have to take, you know, we need to dictate and lay out a, a template so that, you know, we steer the direction. The village is going to change. Are we going to steer it or are we going to let it happen? My, my feeling is we got to steer it. And this is just one part of that. Um, and um, uh, also the, the idea of the 240 versus yeah. 365 acres, that's all we've discussed so far. It's the Indian Point property. And um, the other property, I don't know, uh, David, I think has ba basically said that's up to the village if we're gonna include that or not. Uh, I, I think that's a very easy thing to settle in our first meeting. Um, I don't think we need to re rezone offhand uh, anything else other than the 240. But um, but it's probably worth having an understanding of how what we do might impact those properties in the future, even if we're not dealing with them now. You know, we could look at we could just kind of understand that that what we do on this property may have an impact on surrounding properties. Uh, but um, uh, as Rich said, we can go on to the vote when if if there's no other comments. But I, I just I think it's imperative that we that we get uh, have a professional lead us through this and um, what, you know, 14 and a half thousand. And even if there's money added on because there's additional work that we need him to do uh, on an hourly basis outside of the scope of this proposal. Um, I think that's, that's a, a small amount to pay for such an important issue to this village going forward. I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> the only other thing is I want to read a quick, uh, very quick creation of vision statement. PDA would work with the client in the greater Buchanan community to prepare a vision statement, which will provide the inspirational foundation for the village's effort as it looks to redevelop its waterfront area. The vision statement helps communicate the reason for existence and the purpose behind planning for a long, from a long range planning and development perspective. One of the primary benefits of visioning is that it helps the community clarify how it will approach its critical planning, development, and growth issues. And that's off of David's proposal. Okay, so on a motion, if we are ready now, on a motion to accept... Um, it's just a vote, Mayor. We already I had a vote. Vote. I'm sorry, because I, I go on a question and then I forget where I am. So thank you. So on okay, so all in favor? Yeah. Aye. All opposed? Opposed. Opposed. Okay, so three, two. I'm in favor. Okay, so let's move along to the resolution scheduling a public. Right, thank period. you, David. Have a good night. Thank you, David. Thank, thank you. you for coming. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. So this is something we we usually do. This is a vote overriding the New York State property tax cap. Um, with what the village is going through, it's very difficult to reach the 2% right now. Um, so uh, I will read this resolution. No, Where you're, uh, I'm you're sorry. for the public hearing. Oh, geez, I'm so sorry. I, I get involved in some things, I'm sorry. Okay, so I'd like to make a motion to, um, Wait a minute. No. So, okay. Thank yeah. you, Marcus. I'm sorry. I got off track. Um, so I'm going to, this is the resolution to set up for the public hearing that I have in my hands. Sorry. Whereas the state legislature and the governor enacted legislation that establishes a property tax cap on the amount that a local government's property tax can increase each year. And whereas the, this law is effective for local government's financial beginning in 2022. And whereas under this law, the total amount to be raised through property taxes change charged on the municipality's taxable assessed value of property will be capped at 2% or the rate of inflation, whichever is less with some exceptions. Whereas the state legislation provides for local governments to override the cap to protect the village from unforeseen financial circumstances. Whereas state legislation requires that in the event that an override is necessary, the law enabling it must already have been adopted by the board of trustees. 
And whereas local law introductory number one of 22 has been drafted to override the property tax cap law enacted by state legislature if necessary. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the village board will conduct a public hearing at the municipal uh, village municipal building on January 4th. Um, it might be a hybrid meeting, uh, you know, we'll, but right for now, we're, we'll have it at the village hall on January 4th, 2022 at 730 for the purpose of taking public comment on and giving due consideration to the enactment of a local law overriding the 2% property tax cap law enacted by the state legislature and be it therefore resolved that a copy of said local law is available at the village clerk's office for public inspection during a regular business hours and be therefore resolved that the village clerk be and hereby is authorized and directed to publish notice of said public hearing in the official newspaper. So on a motion. No move. Second. Second. On Second. a question. No question. All right. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay, so the next thing we're, um, we're going to be setting up a public hearing for January 4th, authorizing the adoption of a local law, um, which will allow us um, to set up an exemption of 10% of the assessed value. So the assessed value of a residential property owned by an eligible person or his or her spouse um, such exemption shall be granted to be an enrolled member of an in incorporated volunteer fire company or fire department and any volunteer ambulance corps only if the member has been certified by the authority having jurisdiction or the fire chief of the incorporated volunteer fire company or fire department has an enrolled member of such incorporated volunteer fire company. The member resides in the village of Buchanan. The property is located in the village of Buchanan and it's their pr primary residence. And the property is used exclusively, exclusively for residential purposes. So what this is about is we're looking to give um, a 10% off the assessed value to someone who volunteers in our community. And without our volunteers, let me tell you, it, it's, it's not a good thing. Um, I had a situation a couple of weeks ago and it was during the middle of the day where I had an accident I cannot tell you how many volunteers, not only fire department, um, the, the police department was there, the, um, um, the ambulance corps. So just think about our world without our volunteers that put in their time, their own personal time to help the community out. So I think, you know, I think this would be a good thing. Um, we're always looking for new, everybody's always looking for new members. You know, um, the volunteer, being a volunteer now is difficult, <clears throat> the training, everything that goes along with it, the time, you know, a lot of people have families, so it's difficult for them to be completely involved. So whatever we can do to A, thank them and maybe encourage more people to become volunteers, um, I'm all for. So um, I'd like to make a motion to call for a public hearing on January 4th, 2022, authorizing adoption of a local law, adding chapter 100 entitled, oh no, I'm sorry, I went on to the wrong one, authorizing adoption of a local law amending chapter 181, entitled taxation of the code of the village of Buchanan to add an exemption for members of volunteer fire departments and ambulance corps. So moved. Second. Second. On a question. On a question, on, uh, on, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Sean. Right. on a section on uh, 181 tax 34 eligibility, the yes. section A, the term should be the same as in uh, uh, permanent eligibility because there's no delineation in A, uh, whether you're active or an associate member. I believe the legislative intent is that you're an active member, not a 20 year associate member. Okay, yeah, I believe it's active also. I, I believe yeah. that too. Okay. Because in, in the other uh, sections, in 35, it says uh, 20 years of active service. So I just to let the public know, there's a difference between an active, exempt, and associate member. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the active members are the members who actively go and participate in the emergency services, where associate members can be members uh, in multiple departments, and they don't, they're mm -hmm. not allowed to actually go to scenes. So I think we should just make that delineation. Okay, and I know like a lot of the associate members are people who have been, for example, for the Buchanan Fire Department, that they have been members um, for many, many, many years, and um, they don't necessarily, they're not necessarily or have ever been active, but they are a member of the fire department. 
So is it is it the intent to allow any member of the department to get this tax exemption or just the active members of the fire department? I thought it I thought it was the active members. Okay. Um, so, let me reread this again, you know, because we will have the public hearing in January. Oh, but the just, law, let me just, let me just clarify the law. Please, you have to be an active you, member. This, okay. is a Thank you, this is a law. <laughs> okay. So if you could just, oh, so you just copied this off the, uh, New York state website. Yeah. A lot of that. Well, I don't want to say if I just copied it, I believe I went to the New York state. I know I went to the New York state website and this is how it's delineated by the uh, statute. Yes. I would just say to have somebody who lives in a village say, hey, I've been an associate member for 20 years. Why can't I get this tax exemption? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you want me to just add the word active? That's correct. Okay, I'll go certainly do yeah, just that. Unless the fire department has an issue with it, you know. Well, and one of the one of the reasons I, you know, when you look at it, I, I think different fire departments determine who's active differently, mm -hmm. depending probably on their membership and what they need for their membership. Um, so uh, I can I can call it active, and then the chief has to determine, obviously under the statute, who has been active and who's qualified. Because just people who have been active for many many years, yeah, they can go through New York State allows an exempt status, where an exempt fireman has all of the same voting and benefits as an active member. So this has been an issue many times with different people. Okay. So I just think there needs to be a little bit of clarification before okay. we do that. Okay, I'll be, I'll be I, know happy to do that. I know there's going to be some people that are going to come and say, hey, I've been doing this for a long time, even though I'm not an active member, why can't I get it? You know, so. We, okay. All right. All right. Yeah, Stephanie, if you could yeah, be more clarify with that. Um, and also, Marcus, I would like you to um, let the chief know that we will be having a public hearing on January 4th, if he would like to... Um, Anybody in the fire department would like to come in and make any comments um, to let them know that we will be doing that. Sure, no problem. Okay, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, this is just to set up the public hearing? Yes. Yes, just to set up yeah. the public hearing. Uh huh. January yep. 4th. Aye. Okay, so we're going to be doing another public hearing on January 4th. Up, um, and this is, we, we've had. Um, I know one of the churches in the village have asked that they be able to have games of chance and currently we don't allow that. So um, we're gonna set up that public hearing to discuss that, to allow the licensing of games. Um, my understanding is uh, what they originally wanted to do was to raffle off a car, which was approximately $35,000 and that just wasn't allowed in our code. So, um, you know, of course, when we get into the public hearing, we'll discuss that more and we will have uh, make sure uh, both churches and any other uh, organizations that would be interested in being in this um, discussion are, you know, at our January 4th meeting. So um, on a motion to call for a public hearing on January 4th, 2022, authorizing adoption of local law, adding chapter 100 entitled Chan Games of Chance, the code of the village of Buchanan to allow licensing games of chance within the village of Buchanan. On a motion? So moved. Second? Second. On a question? Yeah. yeah the, I, uh, go ahead. go ahead, Nick. I'm sorry. I don't mean to. Go ahead. Go ahead, Nick. No, it's a, all right. I'll go this time. Thank you. Um, just uh, on this, uh, the game of chance uh, legislation, which we will have a public hearing for next month, as well as the um, the firefighter or volunteer worker exemption for the uh, taxes, which by the way, we didn't point out, I, I don't think we pointed out to the public that it's a 10% reduction in their taxes. It's not a full uh, tax. They don't get off of all of their they're taxes. Assessed. It's their assess, their assessment. So it's not right. like well, they're paying a thousand dollars. Yeah. If their assessment goes down 10%, their taxes go down 10%. Because mm. taxes are based on assessment. Mm -hmm. yeah. So either way you word it, it's 10% of their taxes. Um, and both mm -hmm. of these are subject to mandatory referendums. Is that correct, Stephanie? Uh, no, we've decided to put on the ballot. I think we discussed it a couple of months in a row saying, let them vote, you know, let the public vote on these two. Mm -hmm. Oh, so we're, okay. but it's going to be something that the public will vote on in March? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Well, if you pass these, yeah. <laughs> okay, I, but it's not required that we put it to a vote? I think, I, I think I they might, I think you have to do, I think you have to do a permissive, don't quote me, because I was advised that everybody wanted you guys to do a mandatory referendum. We're gonna put it on the ballot. And so that's what I did. If you'd like me to look it up and you don't want to do it that way and you'd rather no, do it. No, no, that's fine. That's fine with me. Um, but I also want to point out that the the uh, firefighter exemption, it also includes volunteer ambulance uh, workers. Uh, mm -hmm. So does that mean anybody that works for, say, Cortland volunteer ambulance that lives in the village would be eligible for the same de um, deduction? So is they live in the village, but they're part of an ambulance corps that's without the village, not within the village? Well, that's where the, the ambulance corps is. It's in Montrose. So, but they're still, if they live in the village, they're eligible for that also? I'd have to look that up. I didn't even okay. consider the fact that we were talking about an ambulance corps that's outside of the village with a resident inside the village. Yeah, that's what I'm questioning. I'm not sure how that works. Uh, but I know I, that the, the, the motion, the uh, resolution refers to... Um, Volunteer workers, both fire and ambulance right. corps workers. Yeah, uh, and I did that specifically. I know you don't have one uh, within the Buchanan Engine Company, but since you're doing a, a, a local law and it will be in the code, I was sort of thinking, you know, this would cover somebody in the future if that happened in the village. Right. Like if okay, I got you. Company added, you know, an ambulance service or EMTs or whatever right. they're going to do, it so would it cover wouldn't it. Necessarily... have to redo it. So if it doesn't so apply it... now, it would. But I will certainly look up the difference yeah. between right. living in the jurisdiction and the ambulance corps outside of the jurisdiction. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a point worth clarifying. And yep. um, and also to point out that the uh, games of chance, I think um, the mayor or somebody mentioned that it would be for churches, but it's actually for nonprofits. Mm -hmm. so, yep. the, so is the fire department considered a nonprofit? They would be eligible to do this as well? The fire department would. Um, if, if there's a group home run by a nonprofit agency, could they have games of chance at the group home? Not likely they'd want to, but could they? I don't know. Why don't you write me these questions and I'll look them all up for you. Okay. They're for nonprofit charitable organizations. By the way, right. if you take a look at this over the next month and get to me in the month for the meeting, Okay. Uh, um, the town of Cortland passed this ordinance right. many, many, many years ago. And so they are going to become our licensing, administrative licensing um, point of contact. Right. That's they would, they would op basically be the, uh, they would operate it. They would give the licenses and regular, and we wouldn't have to do the, that part of it. That's, that's correct. And, and, yeah. you know, um, okay. technically, the state does the licensing and what the town does is issues permits. Oh, okay. So the wording okay. is a little a little strange. I had a conversation with the person up in the town of Cortland and she understands that the statute's written that way, but she said, you know, the gaming New York State Gaming Commission is the licensing authority. They're also the enforcement authority. Okay. So while the village has to keep an eye out for what's going on and make a report to the state, if we thought something fishy was going on, they actually enforce it and license it. And what the uh, town of Cortland would do is issue the license, I mean, issue the permit to run it. They'd let us know what time, you know, it's gonna be, you know, Saturday from noon to seven. Um, so it's sort of administrative that they'd be doing. Okay. And then directed at, at Marcus, uh, uh, on, there's a couple of aspects of this that the village might have to keep tabs on. For example, it says, if somebody, um, if some, let's say somebody, um, Oh, an active firefighter had a property that uh, that that they lived at, but was also had a co commercial component. That the commercial component would not get the ten percent deduction; the only the residential portion would. And so we would need to determine what part of the assessment is um, uh, from the commercial portion, and what part of the assessment is from the residential portion. How would we calculate this? But I think it would be up to the village to calculate that. And then um, the 10% deduction would only be on the residential portion. So that's something the village uh, would need to address on our, on our um, administrative end. 
And Marcus, well as, for one second, Marcus, I think when we talked to Tom Wakens, he was going to do the assessing on this. Is that correct? That, that's correct. That's right. Uh, Tom Misty, a village assessor. He has, we have forms that we can use. They have this village oh, form. And okay. then between, between Tom and village staff and myself, we can double check that information if that happens. Okay. And then also, um, this goes with the firefighter, not with the house. So we need to make clear that if we change the assessment on a property that was owned by or lived in by an active firefighter, if that person moved or passed away or whatever, um, that it would revert to the full assessment. So we, you know, that would be a bookkeeping thing on our part. Okay. But that's, uh, you know, that doesn't affect the legislation, it just affects um, office work. Okay. All right, so back to the games of chance. Sean, you had a comment? <laughs> okay, Mayor, thanks. Okay, so all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. You're opposed? Who? You, I said all in favor? No, no, I was a delayed aye. Oh, okay, a delayed aye, that's no problem. <laughs> Okay, so the next is um, a resolution authorizing the carryover 19 vacation days for the village administrator. Um, whereas under the current employment agreement, Marcus Serrano, village administrator is entitled to 25 vacation days per year. And whereas the current employment agreement does not allow for the village administrator to carry over unused vacation days, the agreement also provides that in the event of a village emergency or other similar circumstances resulting in the village administrator being unable to take his annual vacation days, the village administrator has the right to appear before the village board to request to carry over the remaining vacation accruals into the next contract year. Whereas given the COVID-19 pandemic and the extra time required of the village administrator, he was unable to take 19 of the vacation days and has therefore appeared before the village board to request permission to carry over 19 unused vacation days. Whereas given the circumstance that the village board is desirous of allowing the village administrator to carry over 19 unused vacation days, now be it therefore resolved that the village board hereby authorizes the village administrator to carry over 19 unused vacation days from 2021 into the 2022 year. And can I have a motion? I'll move. Second. 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 All, Second. all in favor? Aye. 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 question? To Marcus. Aye. Marcus, take a vacation. <laughs> yeah, take some days off, you. Uh, I'll try. Yeah. Now, Marcus has been very good with, with all of, of the different meetings with the Zoom and, you know, the planning board, the zoning board, special meetings. So, Marcus, we appreciate that, that you've um, taken over that job and, and really took care of that for us. Oh, it's been my pleasure. It's been a pleasure serving the village and the board. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, the next is, um, this was the question from the residents. So a motion to appoint Joanna Falcone as part-time senior account clerk at a rate of $20 per hour as of December 8th, 2021. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. On a question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and going forward, we have already discussed at how we are going to advertise these different positions. So, yep, no problem. Okay. Um, consider a motion to accept the resignation of Christine Torres, clerk, court clerk, as of November 9, 2021. So, a motion to accept her resignation. So moved. Second. Second. On a question? We have oh. to, would we have to have a motion to accept the resignation? Is that, I don't think we'd. Makes it official. It's official. Okay. Yeah, it's official. You, can just, you can just accept. You can just accept yeah, the accept. resignation. You just put it on the record. Okay. Okay. So all in favor. We're all in favor. We have no uh, choice. No. Um, well, if we vote no, does that mean she has to come back? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what that means. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so next is consider a motion to appoint uh, Mary Mailer as court clerk at a salary of eleven thousand two hundred dollars, retroactive to November thirtieth, twenty twenty one, as recommended by Judge Daly. So, can I have a motion to appoint Mary Mailer as our court clerk? I move. Second. Second. On a question. Yeah, on a question. Uh, is, sure. is this the uh, the amount that was budgeted? I, I don't remember. Uh, did this was the same budgeted amount? Yes. Without any increments, right or no? That's correct. It's the same salary we're playing the previous court clerk. Okay. And is there a difference in hours? Or is there any any difference in her functions? Or no. Okay. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 No. Aye. Okay. So the next is a motion to authorize the mayor to sign the agreement with Springbrook Holding Company LLC for the upgrade of the financial <coughs> applications. And Marcus, I am going to hand this one over to you. Sure, no problem. I am understanding our KBS system that we've had forever and ever is uh, is running out of steam. Uh, yeah, I gave the uh, the board some update. Um, we've been on KBS since 1980 something, whatever that was. Uh, KBS was purchased um, by two other companies that finally fell under a company called Springbrook, who actually is a software vendor themselves. They took over KVS, and we've been notified that KVS is going to be sunsetting. So therefore, they're not going to provide any updates um, or keep on operating. Uh, it's like, for example, give an example, Windows goes to Windows 11, and it says Windows 10 is being not maintained anymore. You take your own risk in regards to whatever happens. Um, so we've been notified on that. Uh, myself and Cindy and, and Sharon have been meeting with different vendors to see if there's anything out there that might be better. Um, and we came to the conclusion that Springbrook uh, will accomplish everything we need to get done. Uh, the operating system is SQL Server. I'll give you some example, which is the most modern database operations uh, program. Uh, KVS is on iCobol which is a very old antiquated system and Oracle, which is a very complex operating system. So that's the reason why Springbrook is not gonna invest anymore in those applications. Um, we've been having hiccups with KBS. We seem to resolve it, but the customer service is lacking on there as well because they don't have enough, enough employees who are knowing the legacy program because everybody's being trained on a new system. Um, so um, we would like to move forward with the newer operating system that actually will protect the village's interest, but also give us additional services. For example, there's more of the employee portal. So people can see the W-2s, won't have to do it. They can change the, they can change the exemptions online. Uh, they can actually even request vacation or sick time online the department is gonna approve. So it's a lot more functions in the uh, new application. And hopefully the board will, will consider us to move forward uh, with the application so we can uh, start migrating the data over. The other big aspect is that Sharon has been, and certainly Sharon, they've taken a big lead role of bringing to scan all the documents, which we didn't do before. And all those scanned documents with Springbrook will be converted over to the new operating system. Uh, all the other programs we've seen or vendors, they could not transfer that data over as part of the conversion. So therefore we will not lose any of that scan images and they're willing to um, also convert about six to 10 years of information over. So therefore we don't have to go back to the old operating system. Everything will be on the new operating system. So um, I think that's the best option for the village. Um, I gave you also other communities that have already switched over. So little by little, there's less and less uses on KBS, uh, which also is concerning uh, to me long-term. So um, hopefully um, the board would allow us to move forward and uh, upgrade our system, just like other communities have done already. Uh, Cindy's online too. I don't know if Cindy can speak. And if Cindy wants to add something as well, and I'm here to answer any questions. No, I would just like to say, you know, it's more than time for us to move on to a new system. And uh, this one seems to do what we want it to do. So we appreciate if you would let us do it. Thank you, Cindy. Right. The only, you know, the only, the only thing I'm going to say, uh, I, I understand, you know, I understand uh, Windows 7, Windows 11. I understand all that. Um, I, I, I just did the, the total $80,800. Have we budgeted for that? Is there? Yeah, we, we have to funds for that. Just to let you know, it's part of that 18,000 is to buy the applications. Um, 12,000 is the annual maintenance that we pay KVS. That's okay. going to offset the 18000 for the purchase of the uh, application. So that's the difference. So it actually, we have to pay less for that. And the remaining balance is actually conversion and training. So if we, if, you know, if we can save money there, that's the worst case scenario. We can actually reduce that cost if we don't use that much training or we don't convert as many files. So we're, we're going to be very conscious of that as part of the process. So we can probably reduce that, that number on the, by how much. But we pay. We actually will get a credit for that as we move forward. 
Yeah. Mark, yeah. Didn't, didn't we? I could have sworn we bud, we discussed this during the budget hearings and correct we include this in the correct. budget on some line. So we, we do. We did budget for this. We did anticipate this need. Correct. That's absolutely correct. Yeah. Okay. So, so we're, we're ready. So, it, so I, I, it, it just wasn't clear when you answered the mayor. I, it, I know we have the money. I just wanted to make sure we had it in the budget line. So, and did, did you did you have did you say that we were still operating on cobalt? That that Acavis is on coal, is on, on um for uh, payroll and, and our assessment package is on I cobalt. Uh, our, payroll, our payroll package is I, I, I cobalt. It's very concerning to me. Oh, cobalt, just to let people know, cobalt yeah. was an old language. My father actually programmed in cobalt in the 60s when he worked for IBM. And that's why everybody had to do Y2K stuff because it was all based on cobalt. And cobalt didn't see the, the fourth number. So that's how old it is. That's Thank you, Sean. I, I, I worked on that when I was in high school. Well, that was my first program that I learned uh, was cobalt. That, and that's many many years ago for me as well. <laughs> uh, one other one other question in the, in this perspective, I don't see training in here though. Uh, yeah, that's part of the uh, training it, it, Yeah, under the eighteen thousand, when you see the bigger numbers, that's the training and conversion. Uh, um, so that's only including that number that I was just mentioning. Hold on, let me see if I can get to that page. I just see the eighteen thousand. You have the finance sub, uh, suite uh, subscription, payroll subscription, tax collection subscription. You uh, utility billing system. I don't see training. Anymore. Yeah, I'm sorry. When you see uh, item number, like for example, migration and professional services, like for example, okay. it's eleven thousand yeah. for sure. that. Include that includes a training as well. Why don't they have it written in there? Uh, yeah, I can have. I can. I can definitely. Before I sign. Before I sign, I can add that in there. But definitely, yeah, absolutely. that's what they told me. Yeah. Absolutely, because okay. usually, mm -hmm. it, I. Usually, if it's not written down, I don't think we're going to get it. You know what I mean? So I'd love to have them come in and give a couple of four-hour classes and be, be available for, for tech support because I don't see anything in here that talks about tech support either. Yeah, no problem. I can also, yeah, I can I make sure they include that as well. And, and the top, and the up the subscription on the top, uh, Sean, that's the subscription that includes upgrades to the system and any technical calls, but I'll make sure we clarify that in the yeah. final document. Perfect, thanks a lot. No, and, no problem. Uh, no, thank once you. again, the Village of Buchanan has gotten their money's worth out of another item in the billet in, in what we've used. And it's just, it's time to retire and uh, let it go out to pasture. Yeah, and move I, on to the next century. Yeah, they, they actually have, they used to have like 30 or 40 clients out there, out there in KVS, I think they're down like to four or five. So it's going yeah. in the wrong direction. Yeah. It's time. Yes. Okay, so I did on a question. So all in favor? Aye. aye. Okay. I was so, muted. Aye. Aye, aye. Okay. So I do have to add something on this evening um, under number M. Uh, it's And this is a, the motion to accept the donation of furniture and DPW equipment from Holpec International. I know when... Um, Entergy was on their way out. I did mention to them if there's anything that they'd like to donate to the Village of Buchanan, we would be interested. And then after Entergy left, Holtec contact, contacted me and said they had a building full of stuff. So I went over and, uh, as I say, did some shopping. And then Marcus and the office staff and um, Bob Wheeler, our highway foreman. Um, so we have gotten the final amount on that of what we ended up getting over there. And the amount comes to $96,775 donated, if donated goods. Um, so I, I just wanna tell you some of the things that we got from that. Um, there, there's many things we got, but uh, we had gotten two new podiums that are still in a box. And I know Bob has been busy, so he, he hasn't had time to put those together. Um, two fireproof file cabinets that are very important that we need. Um, five projectors. Um, we have four radar speed signs and you'll see one on Tate Avenue. Eventually you'll see uh, others going up around the village. And then also um, we have six, um, six stop signs, no, 60 stop signs, two of those. And I believe when I was over there, I believe both of them were still in a box. I know there were some things that were still in a box. I just don't remember which things were which at this point, but a lot of this stuff was brand new in a box. So all those items together have come to the 96,775. 
So I think the village did good. We definitely thank Holtec for the donation. And um, I would uh, like to make a motion now to accept the donation of furniture, DPW equipment from Holtec National. And then I'm gonna do on a, I'm gonna do on a question, okay? So move, can I have a second? Second. Okay, and on a question? Yes, Mayor. Uh, sure. who, who put these values on this equipment? Sean, when you get into things like, like equipment and different things like that, it's not Holtec that does that. It's, um, it's a depreciation schedule that's approved by the IRS. So they can't come out with some kind of like for a chair, it's $1,000. No, because it's, it, it's, it's a depreciation value. So that's, that's how those numbers were come by. It wasn't Holtec coming, pulling a number out of a hat. So who came up with these numbers? It's, Did we it's, come up with a number and added an appreciation to it, or because these things definitely are not the price that the, that they're selling them for at the plant. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh, and well, not not what they're selling them for now. Oh. So it would go by what it say if something was brand new, it was a thousand dollars. There's a, a a schedule of time that that gets depreciated over. And that's great. Well, who who put those? numbers on this paper. Did the village do it or did Holtec do it? That's all. It's from Holtec do it. Holtec, Holtec gave you, okay, Holtec gave yeah, you. So now Holtec has to report this donation to the IRS. No problem. So just, the IRS will have a conversation with them if that number is wrong. I was just wondering who uh, associated with the, the uh, that's all. Yeah, uh-huh, yep. <clears throat> Any other questions? I think we did good. I think the village. I think the village did good on that. And I is. I don't know if Bob Wheeler is still on. Bob, I'd like to thank you for your time. Um, I know Bob scheduled it when he had time to pick up um, all this equipment and all these things. And you know, he staggered it over different times and picked it up when we have a, had some spare time. So thank you for doing that, Bob. I know that was a lot of work. $96,000 worth of stuff is, is a lot of work. So thank you to Bob and, and to all the highway department for doing that for us. So on a question, uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay, so, all right. So now let's move along. Let's move along here to our reports. Oh, Teresa, I'm sorry. This is Marcus. Before you move to report, oh. uh, uh, Bob is on. We actually received the um, auctions international. I emailed the board members that information. We just got to close the bids today. Oh, uh, okay. So if, 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 if we, Bob, if you have the numbers, I can read them, Bob. If you can read to the board members what the results of the bid international auction was. Well, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me right now. Because I can't remember what they are. We just got. I just go back from. Uh, okay, let me, I, let me let me read them out. And they have, Bob, you have in the comments for the chairs, two hundred forty cabinets, ten dollars. The ninety-seven Chevy uh, truck, two thousand twenty-five. The sweeper, nine thousand three hundred. The fire truck, fourteen thousand one hundred. Uh, one mower, eight hundred and twenty dollars. The second mower, four hundred and thirty. So, if you want to add any additional comments to that. That would be great for the mayor, for the board, and for the public. Well, what happens next basically is that the uh, the board will accept the offers, and then the I, I inform the auction house or auctions international, I should say, tomorrow that they've been accepted. They contact the per, the people that won the, the uh, that got the bids awarded, excuse me, and then they get the payment sent out, and then within ten days they have to come and get the stuff. So, Bob, do we? I don't know. Just, just steer me here. Do we have to approve this 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 evening the auction? Yes. As soon as we approve that that we accept the uh, the bids, the, they will uh, go the next step and make sure they get payment. When they get payment, then they send the payment on to us. Okay. <laughs> Is the board ready to do that this evening? Yes. Okay. I think everything was a fair price for what we got. I mean, okay. some stuff is old, used, you know, a lot of miles, a lot of time and age on some of these things. Yep. Another, another point of where the village got their money's worth again. Okay. So I'm going to add number N. Um, I'd like to make a motion to accept the bids from the auction 
for the following items and Marcus, make sure I did this right. $240 for chairs, 2025 for a 97 Chevy, uh, $9,300 for a sweeper, $14,100 for a fire truck, $820 for a mower and $430 for a mower. mower. And, so, and cabinets for $10. One oh, last and item. cabinets, I'm sorry. I knew I'd forget something. And cabinets no, for fine. $10. Okay. Okay, so on a motion to accept. I'll move. Second. 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 On a question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right, tell them to come and pick it up. Right. Thanks, Bob. I know that was a lot of work, but thank you. Thank you. Got that out of the way, right? Okay, so let's move along to information from officers and departments. Justice report October 2021 received and filed. Um, we also have our police report. Teresa, at this time, I'd like to do it. I, wanted, I think the police report should include uh, what the update I get every, every month. So okay. I'd like to read it out here. Sure, uh, October, absolutely. October 2nd, 2.21, approximately 12.30 p.m., Officer Tiernan responded to a village residence on reported dispute. Officer Tiernan responded and confirmed that nothing criminal was taking place, that in fact, all allegations were civil in nature. The complainant was advised of the same. On October 5th, 2021, at approximately 5.20 p.m., yeah. Officer Buddy received a complaint for a possible <laughs> domestic dispute at a village residence. Officer Buddy responded and was able to determine that nothing criminal occurred. All parties advised of available resources. No further incidents reported. On October 27th, 2021, at approximately 5.50 a.m., Officer Tiernan investigated a missing person complaint. Police officer Tiernan was able to quickly start the process and had other resources available activated with assistance from several other agencies and resources throughout the area, as well as Officer Reg. The mis missing person was located and found to be in good health. On October 28, 2021, at, at 8.50 p.m., Officer Buddy responded to a report of an unknown person knocking on doors and yelling. Officer Buddy responded and was able to locate the person. While speaking with the individual, the officer was able to ascertain that the individual needed some medical assistance. Officer Buddy had an ambulance respond and the individual was provided medical care. Again, yeah, I want to highlight the fact that some of these interactions with police and uh, the citizens, if you can, and some of them are, can get pretty out of hand, especially domestic disputes. And uh, it, it all in law enforcement realize that domestic disputes, when they occur, usually when the officer attends them or gets to them, they are the enemy from, from both sides. So it's, it's, some, it's one of the more dangerous things that officers, are, in addition to traffic stops, do. So sometimes these things may sound very uh, casual, but they're, they're usually not. And I thank our officers for their professionalism and the job they do every day. Thank you. All right, thank you, Rich. Appreciate it. Um, highway reports, bag leaves, just so people get an idea of the tonnage, 8.24 tons, household trash, 72 tons, and metal pickup, 1.2 tons. I usually like to tell people what's going on with that. Wastewater plant for October 2021, um, treated water, ooh wee, a lot of water, 9,635,000 gallons. Sludge removal, 84,000 84, gallons. Uh, building department, October 2021. As we can see on these reports, um, the building inspectors remain very busy. Um, there are a lot of uh, building permits that were issued here, COs issued, uh, fire inspections, um, the accessory apartment inspections that were on the existing list are completed. Um, so yeah, a lot going on in the, in the building department these days. Uh, planning board minutes for September 16th, 2021 received and filed. All right, let's see where else we have. Oh, Buchanan Engine Company, their October 2021 report. Oops, hold on one second, I'm getting to it. So altogether, there was one structure fire. There was seven EMS assist. 
two other emergencies and three mutual aid given. Um, prosecutor's report, uh, I hope everyone has had time to take a look at that. Um, that's been received. And uh, next, moving along to Stephanie Porteous, village attorney. What do you have for us this evening, Steph? The only thing I have would be uh, contract negotiation issues in executive session, please. Okay, absolutely. Got it. Okay, administrator report. Marcus, what do you have for us? Uh, nothing to report tonight unless the board members have any questions they want me to, to um, discuss. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with the trustees report. So, um, Sean, you're first up there. I see you the first picture. So you're number one today. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. I just want to thank everybody for uh, attending the uh, Christmas tree lighting last night uh, on Sunday night. Uh, Nancy did a great job organizing it as well as having the police and fire department as well as the adjoining police departments that help us out every year. Uh, it was well attended and I'm glad that the weather held out for us. I, I think the, uh, the public did enjoy the fact that we were able to hand out uh, or have the table set up for refreshments down by the circle instead of having everybody come back to uh, Village Hall. So I think that worked out great. I'm sorry you weren't able to to attend, uh, Mayor, I know you enjoy doing that every year. I enjoy it, and it really broke my heart not to do it. But uh, yeah, it's, but, uh, but yeah, I, I do agree with you. I think because of COVID, we we wanted to keep it outside, but I think it, it just we reached more people by having it outside. You know, it's just while they're standing there, they could have a cup of hot chocolate to warm up. So I think, you know, going forward, that might be the thing to do. Uh, also, uh, want to uh, thank everybody who attended the. Veterans Day ceremony at the town of Cortland. Uh, it was uh, Linda Baglisi's last Veterans Day ceremony, and uh, she's always been uh, great for, for trying to help out the vets and keeping everybody, well, all the veteran services up in the forefront. Uh, I also wanted to thank the Girl Scout Troop 2448. They handed out on Veterans Day uh, care packages to, to vets throughout our community and adjoining communities. They've started doing that a couple of years ago, and it's great that some of the kids are getting involved and uh, remembering that it, it, it takes a lot of people to uh, keep our country a, a country the way we want it to be safe and free. Uh, today, I also attended the Pearl Harbor ceremony. It's been a, uh, it was held up in the city of Peekskill this year. Uh, Peekskill did a nice job. It was held during their senior citizens meeting. It was the first time that the seniors in the city of Peekskill actually met in public in uh, over a year, year and a half since the virus came out. And it was, it was well attended also. And uh, I was just hoping that maybe we could uh, start meeting more in public. And the, the seniors really, really enjoyed being out. Uh, mm -hmm. Food and everything were, were provided. So uh, hopefully we can start meeting in public and doing more things in public. Mm -hmm. uh, also want to thank the highway department for uh, Replacing the lampposts. I know we had some lampposts that were out on Westchester Avenue. Some residents had uh, questioned me over summertime uh, when the stuff was going to get done, and I'm glad that Bob was able to uh, to accomplish it. I know they've been uh, really busy, especially with water main breaks, but uh, yeah. they, they all look the same, so you can't tell which ones were replaced or not, so I'm yeah. glad that they were able to take care of that. Uh, also, I know years ago, uh, around 10, 15 years ago, we did have a lot of water main breaks around the same time of year. Mm -hmm. And doing a deep dive on the investigation as to why we had done, we were having those problems at that time, we found that we were having some issues with our uh, pressure reducing flow mm -hmm. regulating valves on the uh, mm -hmm. Albany Post Road as well as down by Bannon Avenue. And I don't know uh, what the maintenance schedule has been on that. I know uh, we go back and forth with, with uh, we had replaced a lot of the components mm -hmm. in there but when uh if those valves if the seats get washed out we're going to have shock waves like that and it yeah. seems like i don't know if, if, if this is the same but, but maybe we could uh ask george and, and wheels just just to look into that because you know, these water main brakes are very expensive they're very inconvenient to the, to the uh, residents and if we could uh you know see what the root cause is get some root cause analysis on this maybe we can uh, avert it in the future so uh, that's all I really have. I, I just want to 
Uh, wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a speedy recovery to you, uh, Mayor. Thank you. I appreciate that, Sean. Uh, Richard Funchen, what do you have for us this evening? Oh, thank you, uh, Mayor. Uh, I was at the Tree Lighting Ceremony also. It was very nice. It really, uh, the, as, as Sean said, the weather co cooperated with us. And it was probably one of the most attended in, uh, that I've seen in about the last 10 years. So that was nice and, and really attended by a lot of, of uh, little children who were looking at Santa. So, and Nancy did a great job and everybody there uh, involved with it did a very great job. And uh, I was also at v Veterans Day as I always am. And the, it's always nice to see them all there. I, I wish I could see more I probably saw more young veterans down at the Veterans Hospital and things I've gone down there uh, because they they seem to have um, in the recent years taken the brunt of things in wars, especially uh, psychologically and especially with the uh, uh, PCSG. Uh, so I know it's probably toughest on them and maybe some of these celebrations even brings the thing back to them. So uh, God bless them and uh, I always pray for them every day. Uh, I'd especially like to uh, talk about uh, Linda. Linda has done uh, Puglisi, the town of Portland supervisor and our supervisor. I think one of the biggest things that she's accomplished, not only about keeping taxes down is one thing, which is very important to all of us, but the amount of open space that she has maintained and created in the town of Portland I've had many uh, visitors from different parts of the world come. And one of the comments they make, especially when you go down to Verplank, is they look around and see the beauty of the Hudson River and all this open space. And the comment is they can't believe that they're 30 miles or 50, 30 miles from the largest city in the country because it seems so quiet and tranquil. And Linda Puglisi is very much responsible for a lot of that. And I know she's joined with you, Mayor, and the both of you have done incredible work in the sense that we, I guess, were uh, you know, hit blindsided by this whole closure thing uh, that nobody in the village, including all the politicians, knew nothing about it. And the both you and Linda have worked so hard. Uh, I know from, from all the meetings I've seen you people attend, the results you've came back with, and I wish Linda a, a great retirement. Uh, she certainly deserves it because she's done so much for us. And finally, I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. And my usual thing in December, just a piece of advice from what I've seen in the past, don't leave your house with your Christmas lights on because you never know what, what happens. The, the most, most of those Christmas lights have false UV, UV uh, uh, testimony that they are they have been examined and that there haven't been so i just passed that along and also i saw from firemen from new york city where they were saying about how a lot of people pack away their lights in their attic or in pl other places that are are cold and if they if they crack they're subject to you know any kind of a fire problem and i think we all know from talking to any fireman and seeing on television how fast a fire could spread just from one spark. So everybody have a great Christmas, have a happy new year, and we look forward to seeing everybody healthy. And please, God, let us pray that COVID comes to some sort of an end. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Rich. Uh, Trustee Zachary. Hi, thank you. Um, I have very little to say tonight. I will just, uh, as the Greek on the board, I would like to uh, report on, on the proper pronunciation of the word Omicron. So this new variant <laughs> is a Greek letter and it is pronounced Omicron. You don't have to roll the R, but it's Omi, <laughs> like Omi, oh my, and it's Kron rhymes with drone, Omicron. If you don't mm -hmm. roll the R, it's okay. But I've heard about 20 different pronunciations from people on the news and everything. And it, it is, take it from a Greek, it's Omicron. <laughs> um, other than that, I just wanna say a Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy holidays to the people who are, um, who celebrate any other holiday. I'm not gonna mm -hmm. name them all. Um, let it be a time where everybody 
uh, shares positive time with their family and 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 um, and and feels better about things with the world. <laughs> yeah. um, and um, and happy new year as well. Thank that's you. It. That's it for me tonight. Oh wow. Okay. Thank you, Nick. And thank you for that lesson. Um, <laughs> Trustee Capicotti. Oh, oh, I think you're muted, Anthony. I'm here now. You saved the best for last, I guess. Oh, what can I say? <laughs> I wasn't ready. I thought Nick was going to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah listen, if you're disappointed, easy. I'll make up more stuff. No, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't have a lot to say either. Just, I'm sorry for being late to the meeting. I work late. Uh, uh, I was at the tree lighting. It was beautiful. The community mm -hmm. was great. The kids, seeing the kids out there was great. Everybody who participated in the uh, production of it was great. The cops, the, 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 the firemen, the Santa Claus, uh, everything was perfect. The decorations were perfect. I really enjoyed being a part of it, and I want to thank the community for letting me to do letting me do that. Um, other than that, you know, everything around the village looks good to me. I love. Uh, I don't know the percentage of uh, uh, paving that's been done, but the, the what has been done looks good. Mm -hmm. um, picking up the leaves, Bob. Great job. Great yeah. job. The leaves clean up has been perfect. The village looks good. And uh, let's keep up the good work. And, and yet, like uh, everybody said, it is holiday season. You know, if somebody needs something, help them out if you can. And uh, just be the best you can be. And uh, just Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year. All right. Thanks, Anthony. Um, I did want to update everyone. The road programs um, are suspended for the year. Um, the weather just did not cooperate with us any further. So we will be finishing uh, from 4th Street, paving from 4th Street to Tate Avenue and also out back of the Village Hall in the spring. So we can wrap that up. Um, the lamppost, we have waited so long for them. I believe they were ordered in February. <laughs> and you know, with the supply situation and also getting them installed. So very happy to see that they're all lit up looking pretty again. Um, also, I wanted to mention the seniors have been meeting, but they're, they're very strict about, you know, how they meet, you know, you have to be vaccinated, you have to wear a, a mask. And so the board knows if you have time on December 14th, they have their Christmas party at Village Hall. So stop in to say hello to them. They'd, they'd love to see everybody. Um, also on December 14th, uh, we do have a proclamation for Linda. I believe their meeting starts at seven o'clock. She knows the village will be there uh, to give her a proclamation. And, you know, Rich, yes. I mean, she, for the village, for me, for all of us, was a great partner going through um, the closure of Indian Point. We worked very closely together, um, you know, the meetings, everything. And it, it was, you know, just a pleasure to work with her. A uh, huge advocate for the communities, and um, she will definitely be missed, but we wish her well. So uh, anybody that would like to go to that December 14th meeting, please be there by uh, 7 o'clock. And um, the only other thing um, I really want to say, and I'm, it's going to be hard for me to say this, but I thank everyone from the bottom of my heart. I, with this injury I've gotten, and I still have to go on to surgery. Um, we're not finished yet. Um, so the recovery hasn't started yet. Um, I broke both of my shoulders. So I, I'm looking at two shoulder replacements, both of my humerus bones. And, um, but I cannot tell you the support I have gotten. Um, I, uh, the flowers, the food, the cards, the gift cards, I, I just, I, the emails, I, I just, I'm just overwhelmed. And I had gotten some really bad news with what was going on with me last Tuesday. And when I got home on my doorstep were more flowers and I was just blown away. So this is a great community. When somebody has a problem, we all come together. We all help each other. 
And that's what makes Buchanan what Buchanan is. This is what makes us a community. And we've seen it with other people, other people that were in need. Everybody steps up to the plate, comes forward and wants to help. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I am very touched um, for the support. And um, it just really, it shows us who we are as a community that we live in. So I want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. I believe this week Hanukkah is still, um, I think it started on Sunday. So happy Hanukkah to our, our Jewish friends. And um, I guess Kawans, I think is around our, our Christmas. So happy, Merry Christmas, happy holidays, whatever, whatever you celebrate. And I wish for each and every one of you a happy and healthy new year. So with that, um, some comments from the floor. I'm opening up to comments from the floor. We have three people that held out through all this. Okay. Uh, if anybody's ha anybody wants to raise their hand right now, there's no hands raised, Mayor. Okay. No, I, okay. So I guess we don't have any comments from the floor. So um, we are gonna go into executive session. I'd like to make a motion to go into executive session for negotiations and contractual, uh, contractual discussion. Make a motion to enter into executive session. Okay. Can second. I have a second? second? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you.